thank you very much, Mr Chair, and I'm so pleased to be here. Can everybody hear me up the back? Fantastic. And it was really interesting hearing the debate on the previous motion, I have to say. Um, but I want to thank you again for having me. And what I thought I would do in the time that's been allocated to me, if you're all comfortable with this, is to give you an overview of the budget for 2016-17. We handed down the budget as a state government just over three weeks ago. It feels much longer. But end of June, we handed down our state budget. And I thought I would take you through some of the main highlights of the budget and the government's strategy over the next 12 months. And I also wanted to reassure you, uh, certainly, that uh, the government completely appreciates, no matter where, which part of New South Wales we're from as ministers or members of parliament, uh, the contribution um, the farming community makes to the New South Wales economy, but also uh, regional New South Wales makes. And in fact, for the first time ever, we had an attachment to the budget this year which focused on what we're doing in regional New South Wales. So if anybody is interested in having a, that, that uh, document, we'd be more than happy to get it to you. So I hope everybody can see the slides. Not yet. I'll just make sure that our technical people... Yeah, but can you guys see them? Oh, that you can see them. Okay, sorry, I can't see them. Okay, so the first slide just talks about... Um, our strong financial position at the moment as a state. So June 30, 2015-16, we had a surplus in New South Wales of uh, just over $3 billion. And next year, we're forecasting a surplus of $3.7 billion. And this is alongside a position where essentially, as a government, we have no debt and we're able to maintain our AAA credit rating. And as all of you know, um, notwithstanding that, you need to make sure you keep your expenses under control, which is what we're doing. And we're also very proud of the fact that New South Wales is leading the nation in jobs, in growth, in consumer and business investment. And interestingly, a lot of that jobs growth is happening in, in regional New South Wales. I'm always very heartened when I get the job figures to see how many jobs are being created outside of, of Sydney and the major regional towns. But having said that, we do appreciate there are always pockets of challenge. We do appreciate some parts of the community are doing it tougher than others, and that's certainly on our radar. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that the number of jobs created in regional New South Wales is, is very, very encouraging. We're spending a record $73 billion on infrastructure over the next four years, and we're also spending record amounts in key areas like health, education and justice, including community services, police. The dark blue shows you where we thought our budget surplus position would be last year, and the light blue is what we're forecasting now. So we are forecasting um, a $3.7 billion surplus next year, but then you see in 17-18, it's a big drop down to 1.3 bill, uh, and then it stabilises and starts going back up. And the reason for that big drop is that New South Wales is a victim of its own success. Because we are doing better than the other states, we will get less of our share of GST. And just to show you what that means, in 1920, we will get $3.8 billion less in that year than what we got in 1415 in the GST. So over the next four years, our government will be getting nearly, we'll be losing about $11 billion of our share of the GST because the way the formula works is that the stronger states have to subsidise the other states. So we do need to watch that as a challenge. Again, it's a good challenge to have in that we're the victims of our own success, but that is a challenge for us in terms of our revenue moving forward. But despite, um, despite falling revenue growth, we've made sure we keep our expenses under control because as a state, you need to make sure your expenses growth doesn't exceed your revenue growth. Like any good business, you need to make sure you're keeping your expenses under control. So I just wanted to show you the first two graphs show the previous government's record. Their revenue was growing at 6%, but their expenses were growing at 6.5%. So their expenses were growing faster than their revenue. The middle two bars are our time in government. So we had revenue growth slow down to 5.2%, but we've made sure our expenses growth is down at 4.3%. And interestingly, when we came to government, expenses were growing at 6.5%. Now they're down to 4.3%. That's about a drop of 30%. And we've done that, even though we're spending record amounts on infrastructure and services. Moving forward, our revenue growth will continue to decline, mainly because of GST. 
There's other factors as well, but the biggest impact um, or the biggest cause of revenue growth decline in, in the next four years will be because of GST. And uh, we estimate that if you take into consideration the proceeds we're getting from transactions and other things which haven't hit the budget yet, that our revenue will grow at about 3.4% over the next four years. So we need to keep our expenses under that. So we're planning to only have our expenses grow by 3%. But again, it shows you that's less than half what we inherited. So even though our budget's in a strong position, if you don't keep your expenses under control, the budget gets away from you. And unfortunately, I don't want to get too political, but the previous government didn't get that. And so how are we keeping our expenses under control? Well, at the time, we made a very challenging decision to uh, manage or maintain wages growth in the public service to 2.5%. As a result, we've saved $2.5 billion, which we've invested in the front line. As many of you would know, in the current environment, 2.5% isn't, isn't too bad in terms of wages growth year on year. Uh, but that's allowed us to invest in frontline services. We're making sure we keep our back office efficient. So even though we're growing the front office, we need to make sure our back office expenses in admin, in technology are, are, are keeping, um, are under control, which is why we apply a dividend, an efficiency dividend across all our agencies. And we're also making sure that we're using data better to manage our back office and put, and eliminate duplication so that we put all the services, all the, all the resources into the front line. So I thought I'd go through with you some tax changes that we announced in this year's budget. The first one is we abolish, we're abolishing three major business taxes. This was first discussed in 2008, uh, or it was meant to first happen in 2008, never did. We're now in a strong enough position to abolish these three business taxes. And we've done that um, because we know that by, by uh, improving business conditions, by allowing businesses to grow, we will encourage them to create jobs and invest in the economy. And that will cost us about $2 billion, $1.8 billion over the next four years. Uh, but it will save businesses um, a lot of stress. And just to give you one example, non-real transfer duty, which is the last tax we've abolished, um, that means if you transfer IT or, or non-property, you could have uh, had to have paid $40,000 every time you transferred an asset from one business to another. That no longer exists. And just to give you an impression as to how many times businesses were hit by those taxes, there were 250,000 transactions last year which were captured by those three taxes, and they're now gone. Uh, the second thing we did is we're imposing an extra tax for foreign investors on property. So if you're not an Australian citizen or an Australian resident, uh, you will have to pay 4% extra on stamp duty and 0.75% extra on land tax. So if you're a foreign investor in property, you now have to pay more. Uh, many of you would also have heard, hopefully through your peak body, that uh, we're also amending the way emergency services levy is collected. This is consistent with what Victoria and Queensland and the other mainland states have done. So rather than pay for your uh, emergency services through your insurance premium, you'll now be paying through your property levy. And on average, every policyholder will save about $40 a year. We're work working very closely with all relevant stakeholders. That will come in from 1 July next year. Uh, and obviously, um, uh, there'll be different categories of land. And we're talking to the local government association as well as farmers and others to make sure um, there's extensive consultation. So from 1 July next year, you'll no longer be paying uh, this levy through insurance premiums. It'll be based on property ownership. But the, main, the other main issue, apart from making this system fairer, that new way of doing it will ensure that premiums go down because at the moment there are too many people unfortunately in New South Wales that can't afford insurance or are, or are not insured. So by doing this important reform we will be encouraging greater levels of insurance and um, just to give you assurance this is revenue neutral so the government won't be making a cent from this. This is actually to make the system fairer and to also encourage people who aren't insured or don't have the right level of insurance to insure. We're also supporting uh, businesses who've got 50 or less employees to hire people. So if you're a business that's got 50 or less employees, you hire somebody and they stay, stay with you uh, for a period of time, we will give you a payroll tax rebate of $6,000. It used to be $5,000, but we've put, upped it to $6,000 to give people incentive to hire. Notwithstanding all those expenses controls, notwithstanding those changes to taxes, we are making sure that we're spending record amounts in health, education, public order and safety, just as examples. So 
Just to give you an example of the magnitude of, um, of the government's spending, uh, health <coughs> will be spending a record $20.6 billion just in the next financial year. That doesn't include infrastructure, that's just day-to-day -day services. Uh, education, similarly, we're spending record amounts, uh, an increase of more than 7.5% on the previous year. So this is just to give you confidence that even though we're pretty tough on ourselves in how we spend money, we're spending record amounts on the front line. And since we've been in government, we've employed more than 3,000 teachers, more than 1,000 police, and nearly 5,000 more nurses and midwives across the state. And of course, in infrastructure, um, if you look at the previous government, they were spending about $6 billion a year from state resources on infrastructure. We're doubling that. So we're sp we'll be spending more than $12 billion a year. And the good news for rural and regional New South Wales is that um, we put a policy in place that at least a third of that, or a third of that has to, or 30% has to be spent in rural and regional New South Wales. So this makes sure um, that investment is happening where it's needed all across the state. And just to give you an example of how much increase of infrastructure spending each of the key areas has, schools are up 37%, hospitals are up 14%, uh, roads and transport already up for high base, up 16% on last year. That's just the increases in one year. And in this budget, we've given a particular boost to, to education. We're um, increasing by 50% the number of money uh, or the amount of money we're investing in new schools and new classrooms across the state and also providing more resources for the infrastructure or the maintenance backlog. And of course, in roads, freight and transport in regional New South Wales, we're spending uh, an extra $50 million in one year on fixing country roads, um, spending nearly $250 million to upgrade and maintain our regional freight lines. And this is just, th this, this is an all the, list, all the list of things we're doing in rural and regional New South Wales, but just to give you a snapshot um, of some of the things we're doing. And we're spending more than $2 billion in one year alone to fast track major upgrades of key regional highways to improve the freight tasks. So whether it's the Pacific, Princess, Central Coast, Great Western, Newell, New England, Oxley, Mitchell, Kings, Riverina, Silver City, Cobb and Bell's Line of Road. So we really appreciate not just that we need to improve travel times for individuals, but improve the freight strategy as well. And we're also investing in other key areas in regional New South Wales. So $15 million for round two of the Mobile Black Spots program. Uh, continuing to roll out our regional tourism infrastructure fund. Uh, where uh, you may have heard we're spending half a billion dollars over three years to secure Broken Hills water supply. We are assisting uh, eligible New South Wales house households with the financial cost of potable water. Uh, and, uh, and also um, supporting local land services And you may have also uh, already uh, know about the support we're giving or, or contributing towards our drought strategy. So we'll be spending more than $93 million in 16-17 alone to continue to drought-proof New South Wales as much as we can. And having, set, having provided the context of record spending in services and infrastructure in rural and regional New South Wales, if you look at 15-16, this, this is a graph showing our debt position. New South Wales essentially has zero state debt. But you do see the debt position go up over the next five years as we ramp up our spend on infrastructure. But the key thing to note here is this doesn't include all the proceeds from the transactions that we have coming up. So as you know, we went to the last election saying that we'll lease 49% um, of the poles and wires business. We've done that to one of the businesses. There's still two businesses to go through. So once those transactions happen, that net debt position will go down again. That's the whole, pro that's the whole point of our asset recycling strategy. And just to give you an example of how well we're doing on our debt position, Assuming even that we didn't reduce the debt through those transactions, in 1920, our debt would only be 3.7% of our gross state product. Victoria is already at 4.7%. They're not doing half the things we're doing. In fact, they're not even coming close to the amount of money we're spending on infrastructure. They're already at 4.7% debt. Um, we won't get there for another five years, and that's a worst case scenario. That doesn't include the proceeds of transactions. And why do I compare ourselves to Victoria? Victoria is the only other state that has a AAA credit rating. 
We're also doing all, as much as we can on housing affordability, which is a bigger challenge in, in the cities as it, than it may be in other areas. But we've got record numbers of approvals in housing uh, and supply is the best way we can reduce uh, or put downward pressure on house prices. And that's certainly something we're working hard to do. But in terms of jobs and economic growth, no matter which part of New South Wales you're in, and of course there are always pockets of challenge, uh, New South Wales is doing extremely well. And I'm very proud to say that in the last 12 months, uh, more than 79,000 jobs were added in regional New South Wales. And that's an increase of 6.6% on the previous year. Now, I appreciate that your individual experience might be different depending on which part of the state you're from. <coughs> but generally speaking, the numbers are very positive. And in the last 12 months, New South Wales has created more jobs than all the other states combined. And in fact, uh, regional New South Wales created more jobs than Queensland in the last 12 months. And we enjoy the lowest unemployment rate in the nation at 5.3%, but I do appreciate that in some areas, youth unemployment in particular is, is, is much more severe than that figure. And just to put our economy in context, New South Wales is way out ahead, whether you look at the ANZ Statometer, which actually they provided an update only this morning to show New South Wales is leading this, the nation, or whether you look at the Commonwealth Bank's ComSec State of the States report, New South Wales is way out in front. And just in conclusion, uh, when we were putting together the budget, I thought to myself, what are the key indicators people look at to see whether you've got a strong budget and a strong economy in New South Wales? So on the left-hand side, we've put some of the indicators people ask you about when you're the state's treasurer. They say, do you have a budget surplus? Well, next year, we're predicting one of $3.7 billion. What's your debt position? Well, we've probably, well, we've virtually got zero uh, debt and the low debt position will continue. What's your credit rating? Well, it's the highest you can get at AAA. Are you spending enough on infrastructure? $73 billion over the next four years. Are you spending enough on services? Well, in one year alone, 16, 17, we're spending more than $73 billion. How are you going on employment? Well, when we delivered the budget last month, New South Wales had created nearly two thirds of the nation's jobs in the previous year. Not bad. Housing supply? Well, we've got a record approval of 70,000 dwellings and their approvals that have been ticked off, but not yet in construction phase. So that will ensure that the construction will further create jobs. What do you like on consumer confidence? We're the only state that has more optimists than pessimists cons consistently. We're the nation's strongest. What are you doing with business investment? We're the only state in positive territory in the country. And we're also growing fastest rate uh, in the nation. So I hope that gives you a bit of an indication as to where we're heading. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And please be assured that we appreciate that those positive statistics do come under challenge depending on which part of the state you're in. And we're making sure that our strategy for rural and regional New South Wales in particular is targeted to meet the needs of specific communities. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for all you do to support these strong figures uh, I've presented this, this afternoon and I look forward to working uh, with you uh, into the future. Thank you very much for your time.